Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, January 18th, 2023 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I am recording from Jacksonville, Florida. In Diaries today, we got a real nice hands-on one by Rob about the PowerShell script that you can use to actually find certain group policies in your organization. The challenge here is that you often have many, many different, if not hundreds, thousands of group policy objects. And then, of course, trying to find a particular one that may not even be named very obviously it can be challenging so uh, rob has a powershell script here for you to help with uh, that task starting with representing uh, these groupology objects in xml and then actually finding what you're looking for in the resulting xml document a pretty nice powershell script here that rob put together and i hope you'll find that uh, handy and the Open Source Technology Improvement Fund, OSTIF, sponsored a source code audit of a Git by security company X41. They released their report now, and with that, they also released details regarding two vulnerabilities that they uncovered as part of the audit. Git is, of course, the ubiquitous source code management tool kind of a vulnerability in Git is sort of your ultimate supply chain vulnerability in some ways and always interesting to see what they find. One of the fundamental issues with Git has been in the past that there are certain circumstances where you actually would like a Git to execute some code that is part of the repository like hooks and such that are automatically being executed as you're committing or retrieving a code from a Git repository. So some of these vulnerabilities in Git have uh, really been applicable if you are dealing with untrusted repositories. The vulnerabilities uncovered here are a little bit different. Uh, both of them sort of affect the uh, Git attributes. Uh, one is an integer overflow that can lead uh, to heap read and write sent with that to code execution. The second one affects the git archive file and the use of custom formats when you're using a git log which also then can be used to remote code execution i wouldn't rate any of these vulnerabilities uh, critical uh, but again something that you want to be on top of it that you want to patch as patches become available for your platform in general using a git on untrusted uh, repositories is always a little bit a tricky proposition, but this is also kind of the flaws that an attacker who has some access to your internal repositories could use then to escalate privileges and potentially then infect uh, developer machines. And of course, it's really nice to see audits of a code that's as critical as a Git. And researchers from Orca Security have found uh, four different server-side request forgery vulnerabilities in four different Azure services. Server-side request forgery means that an attacker is able uh, to trick a resource within your cloud environment here, Azure, to send HTTP requests uh, to other resources. This can often be used to bypass authentication. Two of these server-side request forgery Forgery vulnerabilities were exploitable without any authentication, so you didn't even need an Azure account of your own. The lethality of uh, these type of server-side request forgery vulnerabilities depends very much on what services you're able to reach with these requests. In this particular case, it looks like uh, Execution was a little bit more tricky, but uh, yes, a remote code execution was possible under certain circumstances. As a user of these services, of course, difficult to defend against them if you don't even know the vulnerability exists. Typically, limiting the capabilities of your credentials that are being used for these sort of inter-service requests are typically your best bet in order to limit the impact of any of these vulnerabilities. And of course, the poster child here of this vulnerability is the Capital One breach from a few years back. 
And Microsoft announced that with the latest Insider Preview build, the Pro version of Windows will disable the SMB Insecure Guest Authentication fallbacks. This was still enabled in the Pro version. It's really sort of more meant sort of for home users and has already been uh, disabled in like the EDU and uh, other versions of Windows 11. But uh, now, well, it's officially going to be disabled in Pro as well. Well, that's it for today. Thanks and for listening. If you don't have enough of me, a new Packet Tuesday is out as well. Uh, this Packet Tuesday covers uh, IPv6 uh, router advertisements. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.